Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and today we are learning about the wonderful world of greatest integer functions. And um, you guys have probably never heard of greatest integer functions before, and that's why we're learning about it today. But this is a very specific type of piecewise function. In fact, our notation for greatest integer functions, we will either see like this, where it says f of x equals and these brackets, or sometimes we will see it with brackets and like it looks like absolute value symbols. Okay, we'll see it either way. Um, it just really depends on the notation of the particular book that we're looking at or the notes that we're looking at. But what this is telling me is f of x equals the greatest integer of x. And what this is, it is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Okay, which is kind of a weird idea because we are really used to rounding the way we've always been taught. Where it's like, if it's five or higher, we round up. If it's less than five, we just leave it as it is. But in this particular case, we are rounding any number down to the nearest integer. And if we think about real life, Hands down, the best example of this is if we talk about age, okay? If I was there right now and I was asking everyone in the class, how old are you? Even if your birthday is tomorrow, you would say that you are 15, okay? You are not 16 until your actual 16th birthday. So we always, always, always round down. So we need to go ahead and practice this. And I think with positive numbers, it gets pretty easy. Sometimes with our negative numbers, it's a little bit tougher to think about. So our first one here, what is the greatest integer less than or equal to 4? And our answer is 4. What is the greatest integer less than or equal to 4 and a half? And that would also be 4. Okay, because we are rounding down. If you're 4 and a half, you're really only 4. What is the greatest integer less than or equal to 4 and 3 fourths? Well, once again, that would be 4. What is the greatest integer less than or equal to 3? And that would be 3. And what is the greatest integer less than or equal to 3.9? And that would also be 3. So this is just demonstrating we are always rounding down to the nearest integer. Let's do some that are a little bit tougher. Okay, this first one I think is pretty straightforward. What is the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 1? And that would be negative 1. But our next one, it says, what is the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 1 and a half? And I actually want to think of this on a number line so we can think about it. Okay, there's negative 1, there's negative 2. I know negative 1 and a half is here. Basically, what we are doing when we are rounding down, we are always on a number line moving to the left to the next integer. So in this case, we would say negative 2 because that is rounding down. That is the integer that is less than or equal to negative 1 and a half. So we are always moving to the left. So if we look at this next one, negative 2 and 1 third, if I'm rounding down or if we're moving to the left on a number line, the greatest in integer less than or equal to negative 2 and 1 third would be negative 3. The greatest integer less than or equal to negative 4 and a half would be negative 5. And the greatest integer less than or equal to 0 would be 0. Okay, so now we're actually going to put all this knowledge to use. So, with our greatest integer functions, we're starting off with our basic one. Okay, so we have two columns here. We're going to have to make this little chart to figure out where our ordered pairs should be. So, our very first column will always represent our input. So, our input, remember, is x. Sometimes we'll have other columns going on in between here, but my final column will always be our output, which we know is y, and that's whatever f of x is equal to. So in this case, it is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Now, 
Since there's nothing else inside the greatest integer function other than x, which is our input, that's a symbol to me, or that's a sign to me that we only need two columns. Since I'm not adding or subtracting anything afterwards, that shows me we only need two columns here. So, I am going to use this chart as a guide to try and discover the pattern that is going on. I know in my graph, I only need to graph three steps. And one of the key things for us is to make sure that we use fractions to figure out where the jump occurs. And what that means when a jump occurs is that is when the y value or our output is going to change. So, I like always starting off with zero. So I need to think what is the greatest integer less than or equal to zero, and that is zero. So I know zero, zero is a solution, so I'm putting a point on my graph. Now I'm going to try something like one half. So I need to think what is the greatest integer less than or equal to one half, and that would be zero, because we know that we are rounding down. So I know that on my graph, like at one half, there is a point. And I'm assuming that all these values between 0 and 1 half also have an output of 0 and would be on this horizontal line. Now, I'm starting to think maybe it's when we're going to hit 1 that our jump is going to happen and our output is going to change. But to make sure, I'm going to try something like 0.9. Okay, I need to think what is the greatest integer less than or equal to 0.9? Well, that would be 0. So that's showing me that everything leading up to an x value of 1 is going to be on that line of y equals 0. So I need to think, with 1, if 1 is my input, what is the greatest integer less than or equal to 1? Well, that would be 1. So I have a point at 1, 1. Now what I'm going to do with the rest of this, I'm going to put an open circle at, at 1, 0. And what this open circle is showing me is that all these points between 0 and 1 have an output of 0. Okay, the open circle is telling me that at 1, this is not our solution. Our solution jumps, but everything leading up to 1, like 0 0.9, 0 0.99, all those values would give me an output of 0. At this point, some of you might understand where our jump is going to happen. Our jump will be consistent throughout the entire graph. So we might think, oh, since it happened at 1, our next one might happen at 2, and then at 3, and so forth. And I'll let you know you actually are correct, but let's just double check. What if I try something like 1.7? What is the greatest integer less than or equal to 1.7? Well, that would be 1. So that is telling me that all these values are going to have an output of 1 until I hit a value of 2. At 2, the greatest integer less than or equal to 2 is 2. So I have an ordered pair up there. And at this point, I can just kind of predict all the x values between 2 and 3 are going to have an output of 2. Working the other way, and Actually, if I just gave this as my graph, you would be completely correct because you graphed three steps. We can kind of see how they look like stairs there. But if I wanted to work backwards, we could replicate this pattern. And I'm saying here that all the values between negative 1 and 0 have an output of negative 1. All the values between negative 2 and negative 1 have an output of negative 2, and we could keep going forever in both directions. Okay, so this is our graph. It is showing all of our solutions. Now, just to double check, this actually is a function because at these x values, we only have one y value because one point is closed and one point is open. We know if something is open, it is not a solution. So this is the basic Later on in pre-calc, we'll call this a parent function, but this is the basic function of greatest integer functions. We're going to do two more examples that kind of build off of this to show some different examples of what we might see. So if we look at example number two here, 
The one thing that is different is that inside our greatest integer function symbol, we have more than just x. So once again here, our very first column are all of our inputs. The second column are the outputs. Now in between, I have 2x because that is the value that is inside the greatest integer function. So before I find the greatest integer less than or equal to a value, I'm going to have to multiply that value by 2. So once again, I'm going to start with 0, and I need to think 2 times 0 is 0. The greatest integer less than or equal to 0 is 0. So I know that an ordered pair of 0, 0 is definitely a solution there. Now let's say I tried something like 1 fourth. I know 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half, and the greatest integer less than or equal to 1 half is 0. So that tells me that 1 fourth 0 is a solution. Now I'm going to go ahead and try 1 half. Okay, at 1 half, 1 half times 2 is 1, and the greatest integer less than or equal to 1 is 1. So all of a sudden, I'm seeing a change in our output. Okay, in fact, I might not be so sure, is this where it actually occurred at? You might work backwards and put in like one-third or point four or another value between one-fourth and one-half to see where the jump really happens at. I'm letting you know that when the column right next to our output has the same value, that's when the jump occurs. For example here, one-half and zero, those aren't the same, so I know the jump happened here when it's zero and zero. At one half, it's one and one. So when I'm looking at my graph here, I'm actually going to scale it. And one thing I want to point out is if we ever scale a graph, I need to scale the x values and the y values. So I'm going all the way until I hit one half. At one half, it jumps up to one. And based on this, my prediction would be that the next value would change at 1. But I'm definitely going to have to substitute in values to see if that's true or not. So I'm trying 0 0.7. 0 0.7 times 2 is 1.4. The greatest integer less than or equal to 1.4 is 1. When I actually put in 1, 2 times 1 is 2. The greatest integer less than or equal to 2 is 2. So that's telling me that at 1, 2, it jumps up. Okay, so once again, on my graph, all the numbers between 1 half and 1 give us an output of 1. This open circle represents that all these values leading up to 1 have an output of 1. Now at this point, I can probably predict that the next jump's going to happen here at 3 over 2, and this would be good enough for our graph because I definitely have three steps. And we can tell that this one definitely looks different than our previous graph. In fact, I want you guys to kind of think, is there a correlation between jumping up every half with what our function is? And some of you guys might have figured out, well, the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half, so that's why it's jumping every 1 half. If this said 1 half x, it would jump at every 2. If it said 3x, it would jump at every one-third. So that's just a little insight into how we can double-check our graph based on what the equation is saying. Our final example here is the third type that we will see, where this time I still have the greatest integer of x inside, or greatest integer symbol. However, this is not the output. The output is the greatest integer of x minus 2. So once again, I'm beginning with putting x in for 0. The greatest integer less than or equal to 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So that tells me we have an ordered pair at 0, negative 2. My next value I might substitute in is like 0.6. Okay, I know the greatest integer less than or equal to 0 0.6 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So once again, we are seeing that these values still have an output of negative 2. In fact, if I put in like 0.9, the greatest integer less than or equal to 0.9 is 0, which gives me an output of negative 2.
when I substitute 1 in, the greatest integer less than or equal to 1 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Okay, I know that this is where the jump occurs because I have in, an integer here. These two values are exactly the same. So, when I'm graphing this, I know that at 1 it goes to negative 1. So, on my graph, I need to have an open circle at 1, negative 2, showing me that all these values leading up to, I'm sorry, leading up to 1 have an output of negative 2. Based on this, I would predict the next jump would happen at 2. The greatest integer less than or equal to 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So that's telling me that I have an ordered pair at 2, 0. And I'm seeing that it's jumping every single integer. So I could continue in both ways to fill that in. So this is greatest integer function. Um, whenever we see this symbol now, we know exactly what it is. The key things to stress, first of all, make sure you guys are always rounding down. Secondly, we need to try fractions to double check where our jump occurs. Lastly, the thing I want to point out on this one, if our original graph, if you look back at number one, it was right at a y value of zero, this one is at a y value of negative two right away. And if we look at our graph, we notice that it says minus 2. We actually call this a vertical shift down 2. If it said plus 2, that means that I would go up 2. If it said plus 100, our graph would be up 100. So this value here affects where our graph starts up or down.